Memphis is a city in the southwestern corner of the U.S. state of Tennessee and the county seat of Shelby County. The city is located on the 4th Chickasaw Bluff, south of the confluence of the Wolf and Mississippi Rivers. Memphis had a population of 652,717 in 2016, making it the second largest city in the state of Tennessee. It is the largest city on the Mississippi River, the third largest in the greater southeastern United States, and the 23rd largest in the United States. The greater Memphis metropolitan area, including a adjacent counties in Mississippi and Arkansas, had a 2014 population of 1,317,314. This makes Memphis the second largest metropolitan area in Tennessee, surpassed by metropolitan Nashville. Memphis is the youngest of Tennessee's major cities, founded in 1819 as a planned city by a group of wealthy Americans including Judge John Overton and future President Andrew Jackson. A resident of Memphis is referred to as a Memphian, and the Memphis region is known, particularly to media outlets, as Memphis and the Mid-South, equals equals history equals 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 early history equals 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 occupying a substantial bluff rising from the Mississippi River, the site of Memphis has been a natural location for human settlement by varying cultures over thousands of years. The area was known to be settled in the first millennium AD by people of the Mississippian culture, who had a network of communities throughout the Mississippi River Valley and its tributaries and built earthwork ceremonial and burial mounds. The historic Chickasaw Indian tribe, believed to be their descendants, later occupied the site. French explorers led by René Robert Cavalier, Sir de La Salle and Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto encountered the Chickasaw tribe in that area, in the 16th century. JDL, Spain and the United States vied for control of this site, which was a favorite of the Chickasaws. In 1795 the Spanish governor-general of Louisiana, de Carondelet sent his lieutenant governor, Manuel Gayoso de Limos, to negotiate and secure consent from local Chickasaw inhabitants so that a Spanish fort could be erected. Fort San Fernando de las Barrancas was the result. Holmes goes on to note that the consent was reached despite opposition from disappointed Americans and a pro-American faction of the Chickasaws. When the pro-Spanish faction signed the Chickasaw Bluffs session and Spain provided the Chickasaws with a trading post, Fort San Fernando de las Barrancas remained a focal point of Spanish activity until, as Holmes summarizes, the Treaty of San Lorenzo or Pinckney's Treaty of 1795 implemented in March 17 1997, had as its result that all of the careful, diplomatic work by Spanish officials in Louisiana and West Florida, which has succeeded for a decade in controlling the Indians e.g., the Choctaws, was undone. The United States gained the right to navigate the Mississippi River and won control over the Yazoo Strip north of the 31st parallel. The Spanish dismantled the fort, shipping its lumber and iron to their locations in Arkansas. In 1796, the site became the westernmost point of the newly admitted state of Tennessee, located in the southwest United United States but the area was largely occupied and controlled by the Chickasaw Nation. Captain Isaac Guion led an American force down the Ohio River to claim the land, arriving on July 20, 1797. By this time, the Spanish had departed. The fort's ruins went unnoticed 20 years later when Memphis was laid out as a city, after the United States government paid the Chickasaw for land. Equals 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 19th century equals equals equals. The city of Memphis was founded on May 22, 1819, incorporated December 19, 1826, by John Overton, James Winchester and Andrew Jackson. They named it after the ancient capital of Egypt on the Nile River. Memphis developed as a trade and transportation center in the 19th century because of its flood-free location high above the Mississippi River. Located in the low-lying Delta region along the river, its outlying areas were developed as cotton plantations, and the city became a major cotton market and brokerage center. The cotton economy of the antebellum south depended on the forced labor of large numbers of African-American slaves, and Memphis Memphis also developed as a major slave market for the domestic slave trade. Through the early 19th century, one million slaves were transported from the Upper South, in a huge forced migration to newly developed plantation areas. Many were transported by steamboats along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In 1857, the Memphis and Charleston Railroad was completed, connecting the Atlantic coast of South Carolina and this major Mississippi River port. It was the only east-west railroad constructed across the southern states prior to the Civil War. This gave planters and cotton brokers access to the Atlantic coast for shipping cotton to England, a major market. The city's demographics changed dramatically in the 1850s and 1860s under waves of immigration and domestic migration. Due to increased immigration since the 1840s and the Great Famine, ethnic Irish made up 9.9% of the population in 1850, but 23.2% in 1860, when the total population was 22,623. They had encountered considerable discrimination in the city 
but by 1860, the Irish constituted most of the police force. They also gained many elected and patronage positions in the Democratic Party city government, and an Irish man was elected as mayor before the Civil War. At that time, representatives were elected to the city council from 30 wards. The elite were worried about corruption in this system and that so many salon keepers were active in the wards. German immigrants also made this city a destination following the 1848 revolutions. Both the Irish and Germans were mostly Catholic, adding another element to demographic change in this formerly Protestant city. Tennessee seceded from the Union in June 1861, and Memphis briefly became a Confederate stronghold. Union ironclad gunboats captured the city in the naval battle of Memphis on June 6, 1862, and the city and state were occupied by the Union Army for the duration of the war. The Union Army commanders allowed the city to maintain its civil government during most of this period but excluded Confederate veterans from office, which shifted political dynamics in the city as the war went on. As Memphis was used as a Union supply base, associated with nearby Fort Pickering, it continued to prosper economically throughout the war. Meanwhile, Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest harassed Union forces in the area. The war years contributed to additional dramatic changes in city population. The presence of the Union Army attracted many fugitive slaves who escaped from surrounding rural plantations. So many sought protection behind Union lines that the Army set up contraband camps to accommodate them. The black population of Memphis increased from 3,000 in 1860, when the total population was 22,623, to nearly 20,000 in 1865 with most settling south of what was then the city limits. The white population was also increasing, but not to the same degree. The total population in 1870 was 40,220. After thousands of blacks had left the city, they numbered 15,000 that year, or 37.4 of the total. See census table in demographics section. Equals 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 post-war years. Reconstruction and democratic control equals equals equals. The rapid demographic changes, added to the stress of war and occupation, and uncertainty about who was in charge, resulted in growing tensions between the Irish policemen and black Union soldiers following the war. Much of the settlement was left in ruins. Two whites were killed in the riot. Many blacks permanently fled Memphis after the riot, especially as the Freedmen's Bureau continued to have difficulty in protecting them. Their population fell to about 15,000 by 1870, or 37.5 of the city, which then had a total population of 40,226. See Census Table in Demographics Section. Historian Barrington Walker suggests that the Irish rioted against blacks because of their relatively recent arrival as immigrants and the uncertain nature of their own claim to whiteness, they were trying to separate themselves from blacks in the underclass. The main fighting participants were ethnic Irish, decommissioned black Union soldiers, and newly emancipated freedmen from the African-American community. Walker suggests that most of the mob were not in direct economic conflict with the blacks, as by then the Irish had attained better jobs, but the Irish were establishing dominance over the freedmen. In Memphis, Unlike disturbances in some other cities, ex-Confederate veterans were generally not part of the attacks against blacks. The outrages of the riot in Memphis and a similar one in New Orleans in September, the latter did include Confederate veterans, resulted in support in the North for Congress to pass the Reconstruction Act and the 14th Amendment. In the 1870s, a series of yellow fever epidemics devastated Memphis, with the disease being carried by river passengers along the waterways. During the yellow fever epidemic of 1878, more than 5,000 people were listed in the official register of deaths between July 26 and November 27. The vast majority of them died of yellow fever, making the epidemic in the city of 40,000 people one of the most traumatic and severe in urban United States history. Within four days of the Memphis Board of Health's declaration of a yellow fever outbreak, 20,000 residents had fled the city. The panic ensuing left the poverty-stricken, the working classes, and the African-American community at the disposal of the epidemic. Those who remained in Memphis relied on volunteers from religious and physician organizations to tend to the sick. By the end of the year, more than 5,000 were confirmed dead in Memphis. The New Orleans Health Board listed not less than 4,600 dead. The Mississippi Valley experienced 120,000 cases of yellow fever, with 20,000 deaths. The $15 million in losses caused by the epidemic bankrupted the city of Memphis, and as a result their charter was revoked. By 1870, Memphis's population of 40,000 was almost double that of Nashville and Atlanta, ranking it second only to New Orleans as the largest city in the South. The population of Memphis continued to grow after 1870, even when the Panic of 1873 hit the U.S., particularly the South, very hard. The Panic of 1873 allowed Memphis's underclasses to swell amidst the poverty and hardship the Panic wrought 
giving further credence to Memphis being a rough, shiftless city. Also, Memphis had a reputation for being a dirty city leading up to outbreak in 1878. Two yellow fever epidemics, cholera and malaria had given Memphis a reputation as a sickly city and a filthy one. It was unheard of for a city with a population as large as the one in Memphis to have no waterworks, the city still relied entirely on the river and rain cisterns to collect water, and there was no way to remove sewage. The combination of a swelling population, especially of lower and working classes, and the abysmal health and sanitary conditions of Memphis made the city ripe for a serious epidemic. The first case to go on record for the public was when Mrs. Kate Bionda, an owner of an Italian snack house, died of the fever on August 13. Hers was officially reported by the Board of Health, on August 14, as the first case of yellow fever in the city. A massive panic ensued. The same trains and steamboats that brought thousands into Memphis now carried away over 25,000 Memphians, more than half of the population, in a span of five days. On August 23, the Board of Health finally declared a yellow fever epidemic in Memphis, and the city collapsed, hemorrhaging its population. In July of that year, the city boasted a population of 47,000. By September, 19,000 remained and 17,000 of them had yellow fever. The only people left in the city were the lower classes, like the German and Irish immigrant workers, and African Americans. Neither of these two groups had the capacity to flee the city like the middle and upper class whites of Memphis, and thus they were subjected to a city of death. Immediately following the Board of Health's declaration, a Citizens Relief Committee was formed by Charles G. Fisher, and proceeded to organize the city into refugee camps. The committee's main priority was separating the poor from the city and isolating them into refugee camps. Also, the Howard Association, formed specifically for yellow fever epidemics in New Orleans and Memphis, organized nurses and doctors within Memphis and throughout the country in response to the outbreak. They stayed at the Peabody Hotel, the only hotel to keep its doors open during the epidemic, Crosby 60, and from there were assigned to their respective infected districts. Physicians of the epidemic reported seeing as many as 100 to 150 patients daily. The Sisters of St. Mary's Hospital played an important role during the epidemic caring for the lower classes. Already home to a girls' school and church orphanage, the Sisters of St. Mary's also sought to provide care for the Canfield Asylum, a home for black children. Each day, the sisters alternated caring for the orphans at St. Mary's, delivering children to the Canfield Asylum and taking soup and medicine on house calls to patients. Between September 9 and October 4, Sister Constance and three other sisters fell victim to the epidemic themselves. They later became known as the Martyrs of Memphis. At long last, on October 28, a killing frost fell, and a message was sent to Memphians scattered all over the country to come home. Though yellow fever cases would continue to appear in the pages of Elmwood Smittery's burial record as late as February 29, the epidemic itself seemed quieted. The Board of Health declared the epidemic, which caused over 20,000 deaths and financial losses of nearly $200 million, at an end. On November 27, a general citizens meeting was called at the Green Law Opera House to offer thanks to those who had stayed behind to serve and die. Over the next year property tax revenues collapsed, and the city could not make payments on its municipal debts. As a result of this crisis, Memphis temporarily lost its city charter and was reclassified by the state legislature as a taxing district from 1878 to 1893. Although Memphis lost its charter and 75 of its population, a new era of sanitation arose in Memphis. A new municipal government in 1879 helped form the first regional health organization and during the 1880s led the nation in sanitary reform and improvements. Perhaps the most significant effect the yellow fever had on Memphis was its demographic changes. Nearly all of Memphis's upper and middle classes vanished, depriving the city of its general leadership and class structure that dictated everyday life similar to other large southern cities like New Orleans, Charleston, and Atlanta. This put Memphis in a unique position, one in which poorer whites and blacks fundamentally made up the city and played the greatest role in re-establishing the city. The epidemic had made Memphis a less cosmopolitan place, with an economy that serviced the cotton trade and a population drawn increasingly from poor white and black Southerners. The 1890 election was strongly contested, resulting in opponents of the D. P. Haddon faction working to deprive them of votes by disenfranchising blacks. The state had enacted several laws, including the requirement of poll taxes, that served to disenfranchise many blacks. Although political party factions in the future sometimes paid poll taxes to enable blacks to vote, African Americans lost their last positions on the city council in this election and were forced out of the 
police force, they did not recover the ability to exercise the franchise until after passage of civil rights legislation in the mid-1960s. Historian L. B. Wren suggests the heightened political hostility of the Democratic contest and related social tensions contributed to a white mob lynching three black grocers in Memphis in 1892. Journalist Ida B. Wells of Memphis investigated the lynchings, as one of the men killed was a friend of hers. She demonstrated that these and other lynchings were more often due to economic and social competition than any criminal offenses by black men. Her findings were so controversial and aroused so much anger that she was forced to move away from the city, although she continued to investigate and publish the abuses of lynching. Businessmen were eager to increase city population after the losses of 1878-79, and supported annexation of new areas to the city. This was passed in 1890 before the census. The annexation measure was finally approved by the state legislature through a compromise achieved with real estate magnates, and the area annexed was slightly smaller than first proposed. In 1893 the city was rechartered with home rule, which restored its ability to enact taxes, although the state legislature established a cap rate. Although commission government was retained and enlarged to five commissioners, Democratic politicians regained control from the business elite. The commission form of government was believed effective in getting things done, but it reduced representation of the city's full population. Equals 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 20th century equals equals equals. In terms of its economy, Memphis developed as the world's largest spot cotton market and the world's largest hardwood lumber market, both commodity products of the Mississippi Delta. Into the 1950s, it was the world's largest mule market, attracting workers from rural areas as well as new immigrants. From 1900 to 1950 the city increased nearly fourfold in population, from 102,350 to 396,000 residents. From the 1910s to the 1950s, Memphis was a place of machine politics under the direction of E. H. Boss Crump. He gained a state law in 1911 to establish a small commission to manage the city. The city retained a form of commission government until 1967 and patronage flourished under Crump. Per the publisher's summary of L.B. Wren's study of the period, this centralization of political power in a small commission aided the efficient transaction of municipal business, but the public policies that resulted from it tended to benefit upper-class Memphians while neglecting the less affluent residents and neighborhoods. The city installed a revolutionary sewer system and upgraded sanitation and drainage to prevent another epidemic. Pure water from an artesian well was discovered in the 1880s, securing the city's water supply. The commissioners developed an extensive network of parks and public works as part of the National City Beautiful movement, but did not encourage heavy industry, which might have provided substantial employment for the working class population. The lack of representation in city government resulted in the poor and minorities being underrepresented. The majority controlled the election of all the at large positions. Memphis did not become a home rule city until 1963, although the the state legislature had amended the Constitution in 1953 to provide home rule for cities and counties. Before that, the city had to get state bills approved in order to change its charter and for other policies and programs. Since 1963, it can change the charter by popular approval of the electorate. During the 1960s, the city was at the center of the civil rights movement, as its large African-American population had been affected by state segregation practices and disenfranchisement in the early 20th century. African-American residents drew from the civil rights movement to improve their lives. In 1968, the Memphis sanitation strike began for living wages and better working conditions. The workers were overwhelmingly African American. They marched to gain public awareness and support for their plight, the danger of their work, and the struggles to support families with their low pay. Their drive for better pay had been met with resistance by the city government. Rev. Martin Luther King, Jr. of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, known for his leadership in the nonviolent movement, came to lend his support to the work as cause. He stayed at the Lorraine Motel in the city, where he was assassinated by a sniper on April 4, 1968, the day after giving his prophetic I've been to the mountaintop speech at the Mason Temple. Grief-stricken and enraged after learning of King's murder, many African Americans in the city rioted, looting and destroying businesses and other facilities, some by arson. The governor ordered Tennessee National Guardsmen into the city within hours, where small, roving bands of rioters continued to be active. Fearing the violence, more of the middle class began to leave the city 
for the suburbs. In 1970, the Census Bureau reported Memphis population as 60.8 white and 38.9 black. Suburbanization was attracting wealthier residents to newer housing outside the city. After the riots and court-ordered busing in 1973 to achieve desegregation of public schools, about 40,000 of the system's 71,000 white students abandoned the system in four years. The city now has a majority black population. The larger metropolitan area is narrowly majority white. Memphis is well known for its cultural contributions to the identity of the American South. Many renowned musicians grew up in and around Memphis and moved to Chicago and other areas from the Mississippi Delta, carrying their music with them to influence other cities and listeners over radio airwaves. These included such musical greats as Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Muddy Waters, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Robert Johnson, W. C. Handy, B. B. King, Howland, Wolf, Isaac Hayes, Booker T. Jones, Eric Gales, Al Green, Alex Chilton, Justin Timberlake, 3-6 Mafia, The Silvers, J. Retard, Zach Myers, and many others. Aretha Franklin was born in Memphis. Equals equals geography equals equals. Memphis is located in the southwest corner of Tennessee at 35 degrees 7 minutes 3 seconds north 89 degrees 58 minutes 16 seconds west. According to the United States Census Bureau, the city has a total area of 324.0 square miles, 839.2 square kilometers, of which 315.1 square miles, 816.0 square kilometers, is land and 9.0 square miles, 23.2 square kilometers, or 2.76, is water. Equals 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 cityscape equals equals equals. Downtown Memphis rises from a bluff along the Mississippi River. The city and metro area spread out through suburbanization, and encompass southwest Tennessee, northern Mississippi and eastern Arkansas. Several large parks were founded in the city in the early 20th century, notably Overton Park in Midtown and the 4,500-acre 18 square kilometers Shelby Farms. The city is a national transportation hub and Mississippi River crossing for Interstate 40, East-West, Interstate 55, North-South, barge traffic, Memphis International Airport, FedEx's Superhub facility, and numerous freight railroads that serve the city. In both 2011 and 2012, 12, the magazine Travel Plus Leisure ranked Memphis among the top 10 America's dirtiest city, for widespread visibly littered public spaces, with unremoved trash, based on surveys by both readership and local citizens. On a more positive note, in 2013 Forbes magazine ranked Memphis as one of the top 15 cities in the United States with an emerging downtown area. Also in 2013, USA Today readers voted Beale Street as America's best iconic street and Graceland as the best iconic American attraction. The National Civil Rights Museum Museum, at the Lorraine Motel, the site of Rev. Martin Luther King's assassination, ranked third in the poll of national attractions. Equals 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 riverfront equals equals equals. The Memphis Riverfront stretches along the Mississippi River from the Meeman Shelby Forest State Park in the north, to the T.O. Fuller State Park in the south. The River Walk is a park system that connects downtown Memphis from Mississippi River Greenbelt Park in the north, to Tom Lee Park in the south. Equals 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 aquifer equals equals equals. Shelby County is located over four natural aquifers, one of which is recognized as the Memphis Sand Aquifer or simply as the Memphis Aquifer. This artesian water is pure and soft. This particular water source, located some 350 to 1,100 feet, 110 to 340 meters, underground, is estimated by Memphis Light, gas and water to contain more than 100 trillion U.S. gallons, 380 cubic kilometers, of water. Equals 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 climate equals equals equals. Memphis has a humid subtropical climate, Copen CFA, with four distinct seasons, and is located in USDA plant hardiness zone 8. Winter weather comes alternately from the upper Great Plains and the Gulf of Mexico, which can lead to drastic swings in temperature. Summer weather may come from Texas, very hot and humid, or the Gulf, hot and very humid. July has a daily average temperature of 82.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 28.2 degrees Celsius, with high levels of humidity due to moisture encroaching from the Gulf of Mexico. Afternoon and evening thunderstorms are frequent during summer, but usually brief, lasting no longer than an hour. Early autumn is pleasantly drier and mild, but can be hot until late October. Late autumn is rainy and cooler, precipitation peaks again in November and December. Winters are mild to chilly, with a January daily average temperature of 41.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 5.1 degrees Celsius. Snow occurs sporadically in winter, with an average seasonal snowfall of 3.9 inches, 9.9 centimeters. Ice storms and freezing rain pose greater danger, as they can often pull tree limbs down on power lines and make driving hazardous. Severe thunderstorms can occur at any time of the year though mainly during the spring months. Large hail, strong winds, flooding 
thundering and frequent lightning can accompany these storms. Some storms spawn tornadoes. The lowest temperature ever recorded in Memphis was minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 25 degrees Celsius, on December 24, 1963, and the highest temperature ever was 108 degrees Fahrenheit, 42 degrees Celsius, on July 13, 1980. Over the course of a year, there is an average of 4.4 days of highs below freezing, 6.9 nights of lows below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 7 degrees Celsius, 43 nights of lows below freezing, 64 days of highs above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, plus, and 2.1 days of highs above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, plus. Annual precipitation is high, 53.68 inches, 1,360 millimeters, and is relatively evenly distributed throughout the year, though the period August through October tends to be drier. Average monthly rainfall is especially high in March through May, November and December. Equals equals demographics equals equals. For historical population data, see, History of Memphis, Tennessee. According to the 2006 to 2008 American Community Survey, the racial composition of the city of Memphis was, as of the 2010 United States Census, there were 652,078 people and 245,836 households in the city. The population density was 2,327.4 people per square mi, 898.6 per square kilometers. There were 271,552 housing units at an average density of 972.2 per square mi, 375.4 per square kilometers. The racial makeup of the city was 63. 33 African American, 29.39 White, 1.46 Asian American, 1.57 Native American, 0.04 Pacific Islander, 1.45 from other races, and 1.04 from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino of any race were 6.49 of the population. The median income for a household in the city was $32,285, and the median income for a family was $37,767. Males had a median income of $31,000. $1,236 versus $25,183 for females. The per capita income for the city was $17,838. About 17.2 17 of families and 20.6 of the population were below the poverty line, including 30.1 of those under age 18, and 15.4 of those age 65 or over. In 2011, the U.S. Census Bureau ranked the Memphis area as the poorest large metro area in the country. Dr. Jeff Wallace of the University of Memphis noted that the problem was related to decades of segregation in government and schools. He said that it was a low-cost job market, but other places in the world could offer cheaper labor, and the workforce was undereducated for today's challenges. The total metropolitan area has a higher proportion of whites and a higher per capita income than the population in the city. The 2010 census shows that the Memphis metro area is close to a majority minority population. The white population is 47.9% of the eight county area's 1,316,000 1,100 residents. The non-Hispanic white population, a designation frequently used in census reports, was 46.2% of the total. The African-American percentage was 45.7. For several decades, the Memphis metro area has had the highest percentage of black population among the nation's large metropolitan areas. The area has seemed on a path to become the nation's first metro area of 1 million or more with a majority black population. In a reverse trend of the Great Migration, numerous African-Americans and other minorities have moved into DeSoto County, and blacks have followed suburban trends, moving into the suburbs of Shelby County. Equals 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 religion equals equals equals. An 1870 map of Memphis shows religious buildings of the Baptist, Catholic, Episcopal, Methodist, Presbyterian, Congregational, and other Christian denominations, and a Jewish congregation. In 2009, Places of worship exist for Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims. The international headquarters of the Church of God in Christ, the second largest Pentecostal denomination in the United States, is located in Memphis. Its Mason Temple was named after the denomination's founder, Charles Harrison Mason. This church is where Rev. Martin Luther King, Jr. gave his noted I've been to the mountaintop speech in April 1968, the night before he was assassinated at his motel. The National Civil Rights Museum, located in Memphis at the Lorraine Motel, Hotel and other buildings, has an annual ceremony at Mason's Temple of Deliverance where it honors persons with Freedom Awards. Bellevue Baptist Church is a Southern Baptist megachurch in Memphis that was founded in 1903. Its current membership is around 30,000. For many years, it was led by the late Adrian Rogers, a three-term president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Memphis is home to two cathedrals, the Cathedral of the Immaculate
Conception is the seat of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Memphis, and St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral is the seat of the Episcopal Diocese of West Tennessee. Memphis is home to Temple Israel, a Reform synagogue that has approximately 7,000 members, making it one of the largest Reform synagogues in the country. Baron Hirsch Synagogue is the largest Orthodox shul in the United States. Jewish residents were part of the city before the Civil War, but more Jewish immigrants came from Eastern Europe in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Memphis is home to an estimated 10,000 to 15,000 Muslims of various cultures and ethnicities. A number of seminaries are located in Memphis and the metropolitan area. Memphis is home to Memphis Theological Seminary and Harding School of Theology. Suburban Cordova is home to Mid-America Baptist Theological Seminary. Equals equals economy equals equals. The city's central geographic location has been strategic to its business development. Located on the Mississippi River and intersected by five major freight railroads and two interstate highways, I-40 and I-55, Memphis is ideally located for commerce in the transportation and shipping industry. Its access by water was key to its initial development, with steamboats plying the Mississippi River. Railroad construction strengthened its connection to other markets to the east and west. Since the second half of the 20th century, highways and interstates have played major roles as transportation corridors. A third interstate, I-69, is under construction, and a fourth, I-22, has recently been designated from the former High Priority Corridor X. River barges are unloaded onto trucks and trains. The city is home to Memphis International Airport, the world's second busiest cargo airport, following Hong Kong. Memphis serves as a primary hub for FedEx Express shipping. As of 2014, Memphis was the home of three Fortune 500 companies, FedEx, No. 63, International Paper, No. 107, and AutoZone, No. 306. Corporations with major operations based in Memphis include Gibson Guitars, based in Nashville, and Smith & Nephew. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis also has a branch in Memphis. The entertainment and film industries have discovered Memphis in recent years. Several major motion pictures, most of which were recruited and assisted by the Memphis and Shelby County Film and Television Commission, have been filmed in Memphis, including Making the Grade, 1984, Elvis and Me, 1988, Great Balls of Fire, The Blind Side, 2009, was set in Memphis but filmed in Atlanta. The 1992 television movie Memphis, starring Memphis native Cybill Shepard, who also served as executive producer and writer, was also filmed in Memphis. Equals equals arts and culture equals 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 cultural events equals equals equals. One of the largest celebrations of the city is Memphis in May. The month-long series of events promotes Memphis heritage and outreach of its people far beyond the city's borders. The four main events are the Beale Street Music Festival, International Week, the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest, and the Great River Run. The World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest is the largest pork barbecue cooking contest in the world. In April, Downtown Memphis celebrates Africa in April Cultural Awareness Festival, or simply Africa in April. The festival was designed to celebrate the arts, history, culture, and diversity of the African diaspora. Africa in April is a three-day festival with vendors markets, fashion showcases, blues showcases, and and an international diversity parade. During June, Memphis is home to the Memphis Italian Festival at Marquette Park. For over 20 years, the festival has hosted musical acts, local artisans, and Italian cooking competitions. It also presents chef demonstrations, the Coors Light Competitive Bocce Tournament, the Galtelli Cup Recreational Bocce Tournament, a volleyball tournament, and pizza tossing demonstrations. Carnival Memphis, formerly known as the Memphis Cotton Carnival, is an annual series of parties and festivities in June that salute various aspects of Memphis and its industries. An annual King and Queen of Carnival are secretly selected to reign over Carnival activities. From 1935 to 1982, the African-American community staged the Cotton Makers Jubilee. It has merged with Carnival Memphis. A market and arts festival, the Cooper Young Festival, is held annually in September in the Cooper Young District of Midtown Memphis. The event draws artists from all over North America and includes local music, art sales, contests, and displays. Memphis sponsors several film festivals, the Indie Memphis Film Festival, Outflix, and the Memphis International Film and Music Festival. The Indie Memphis Film Festival is in its 14th year and was held April 27, 28, 2013. The Outflix Film Festival, also in its 15th year, was held September 7 to 13, 2013. Outflix features a full week of LGBT cinema, including short films, features, and documentaries. The Memphis International Film and Music Festival is held in April. It is in its 11th year and takes place 
at Malco's Ridgeway 4. On the weekend before Thanksgiving, the Memphis International Jazz Festival is held in the South Main Historic Arts District in downtown Memphis. This festival promotes the important role Memphis has played in shaping jazz nationally and internationally. Acts such as George Coleman, Herman Green, Kirk Whalem and Marvin Stamm all come out of the rich musical heritage in Memphis. Formerly titled the W.C. Handy Awards, the International Blues Awards are presented by the Blues Foundation, headquartered in Memphis, for blues music achievement. Week-long playing competitions are held, as well as an awards banquet including a night of performance and celebration. Equals 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 music equals equals equals. Memphis is the home of founders and pioneers of various American music genres, including Memphis Soul, Memphis Blues, Gospel, rock and roll, Memphis rap, buck, crunk, and sharecropper country music, in contrast to the rhinestone country sound of Nashville. Many musicians, including Aretha Franklin, Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, Booker T and the MGS, Otis Redding, Isaac Hayes, Sean Lane, Al Green, Rance Allen, Percy Sledge, Solomon Burke, William Bell, Sam and Dave and B.B. King, got their start in Memphis in the 1950s and 1960s. Beale Street is a national historical landmark, and shows the impact Memphis has had on American blues, particularly after World War II as electric guitars took precedence. Sam Phillips Sun Studio, the most seminal recording studio in American popular music, still stands, and is open for tours. Elvis, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins and Roy Orbison all made their first recordings there, and were discovered by Phillips. Many great blues artists recorded there, such such as W.C. Handy, father of the blues. Stax Records created a classic 1960s soul music sound, much grittier and horn-based than Motown. Booker T and the MGs were the label's backing band for most of the classic hits that came out of Stax, by Sam and Dave, Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, and many more. The sound still lives on in the Blues Brothers movie, in which many of the musicians start as themselves. Several notable singers are from the Memphis area, including Justin Timberlake, Kirk Whalem, 3-6 Mafia, Ruth Welting and Colin S. Perian. The Metropolitan Opera of New York had its first tour in Memphis in 1906. In the 1990s it decided to tour only larger cities. Metropolitan Opera performances are now broadcast in HD at local movie theaters across the country. Equals 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 visual art equals equals equals. In addition to the Brooks Museum and Dixon Gallery and Gardens, Memphis plays host to two burgeoning visual art areas, one city sanctioned, and the other organically formed. The South Main Arts District district is an arts neighborhood in South Downtown. Over the past 20 years, the area has morphed from a derelict brothel and juke joint neighborhood to a gentrified, well-lit area sponsoring trolley night, when arts patrons stroll down the street to see fire spinners, DJs playing in front of clubs, specialty shops and galleries. Another developing arts district in Memphis is Broad Avenue. This east-west avenue is undergoing neighborhood revitalization from the influx of craft and visual artists taking up residence and studios in the area. An art professor from Rhodes College holds small openings on the first floor of his home for local students and professional artists. Odessa, another art space on Broad Avenue, hosts student art shows and local electronic music. Other gallery spaces spring up for semi-annual art walks. Memphis also has non-commercial visual arts organizations and spaces, including local painter Pinkney Herbert's Martial Arts Gallery, on Marshall Avenue near Sun Studios, another arts neighborhood characterized by affordable rent. Equals 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 literature equals equals equals. Well-known writers from Memphis include Shelby Foote, the noted Civil War historian. Novelist John Grisham grew up in nearby DeSoto County, Mississippi, and sets many of his books in Memphis. Many works of fiction and literature are set in Memphis. Equals 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 tourism and recreation equals 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 museums and art collections. Media related to museums in Memphis, Tennessee at Wikimedia Commons. Many museums of interest are located in Memphis. National Civil Rights Museum. The National Civil Rights Museum is located in the former Lorraine Motel and related buildings, where Rev. Martin Luther King, Jr. was assassinated in 1968. It includes a historical overview of the American civil rights movement and interpretation of historic and current issues. Brooks Museum of Art The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art, founded in 1916, is the oldest and largest fine art museum in the state of Tennessee. The Brooks Permanent Collection includes works from the Italian Renaissance and Baroque eras to British, French Impressionists and 20th-century artists. Bell's Museum of Asian and Judaic Art The Bell's Museum 
Museum of Asian and Judaic Art, founded in 1988, is located in downtown Memphis near the historic Peabody Hotel. It is sometimes locally referred to as the Jade Museum because of the large collection of Asian art made out of jade. In addition to its extensive collection of Asian artwork, it contains a sizable collection of Judaic art. Dixon Gallery and Gardens The Dixon Gallery and Gardens, founded in 1976, focuses on French and American Impressionism and features works by Monet, Degas and Renoir, as well as pieces by Pierre Bonnard, Mary Cassatt, Marc Chagall, Honoré Damier, Henry Fanton Latour, Paul Gauguin, Henry Mattis, Bertha Morisot, Edvard Munch, August Rodin and Alfred Sisley, as well as an extensive collection of works by French Impressionist artist Jean-Louis Forain. The museum also houses the stout collection of 18th-century German porcelain. With nearly 600 pieces of tableware and figures, it is one of the finest such collections in the United States. The Dixon campus also contains a 17-acre public garden. Children's Museum of Memphis The Children's Museum of Memphis exhibits interactive and educational activities for children to take part in, including a skyscraper maze, an airplane cockpit, donated by FedEx, a fire engine, an art studio, grocery store, and, most recently, a mechanics garage sponsored by AutoZone, Inc. Graceland Graceland, the former home of music legend Elvis Presley, is one of the most visited houses in the United States, second only to the White House, attracting over 600,000 visitors a year. Featured at Graceland are two of Presley's private airplanes, his extensive automobile and motorcycle collection and other Elvis memorabilia. On November 7, 1991, Graceland was listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Pink Palace The Pink Palace Museum serves as the Mid-South's major science and historical museum, and features exhibits ranging from archaeology to chemistry. It includes the third-largest planetarium in the United States and an IMAX theater. One exhibit features a replica of the original Piggly Wiggly store, the first self-service grocery store, commemorating the invention of the supermarket by Memphian Clarence Saunders in 1916. Memphis Walk of Fame The Memphis Walk of Fame is a public exhibit located in the Beale Street Historic District, which is modeled after the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but is designated exclusively for Memphis musicians, singers, writers and composers. Honorees include W. C. Handy, B. B. King, Bobby Blue Bland and Alberta Hunter, among others. Mud Island River Park Mud Island River Park and Mississippi River Museum is located on Mud Island in downtown Memphis. The park is noted for its River Walk, a 2,112 to 1 scale working model showing 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers of the lower Mississippi River, from Cairo, Illinois to New Orleans, Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico, 30 inches, 76 centimeters, in the model equal 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers, of the Mississippi River. The walk stretches roughly 0.5 miles, 800 meters, allowing visitors to walk in the water and see models of cities and bridges along the way. Victorian Village Victorian Village is a historic district of Memphis featuring a series of fine Victorian-era mansions, some of which are open to the public as museums. Cotton Museum The Cotton Museum is a museum that opened in March 2006 on the old trading floor of the Memphis Cotton Exchange at 65 Union Avenue in downtown Memphis. Stax Museum The Stax Museum is a museum located at 926 McLemore Avenue, the former location of Stax Records. The original building, a converted movie theater where artists such as Otis Redding, Isaac Hayes, Booker T. and the M.G.S., Sam and Dave and many others recorded throughout the 60s and 70s, was torn down. The original facade was re constructed on the original property. It is operated by Soulsville USA, which also operates the adjacent Stax Music Academy. The original satellite record shop was reconstructed beside this building. It is the only museum in the United States to be devoted entirely to soul music. Chukalissa Indian Village Chukalissa Indian Village is a Walls Phase Mound and Plaza complex that was occupied, abandoned and reoccupied several times throughout its history, spanning from 1000 to 1550 AD. Civilian Conservation Corps workers discovered native of American artifacts on the site in 1938, and archaeological excavations of this Mississippian mound complex were initiated. The facility has been operated by the University of Memphis since 1962. In 1973 Chukalissa Indian Village was added to the National Register of Historic Places. In 1994, it was declared a National Historic Landmark. It is the site of the Southeast Indian Heritage Festival held annually in October. Cemeteries Media related to cemeteries in Memphis, Tennessee at Wikimedia Commons. The Memphis National Cemetery is a United States national cemetery located in northeastern Memphis. Historic Elmwood Cemetery is one of the oldest rural garden cemeteries in the South, and contains the Carlisle S. 
Page Arboretum, Memorial Park Cemetery is noted for its sculptures by Mexican artist Dionisio Rodriguez. Elvis Presley was originally buried in Forest Hill Cemetery, the resting place of his backing band's bassist, Bill Black. After an attempted grave robbing, his body was moved and reinterred at the grounds of Graceland. Equals equals sports equals equals. The Memphis Grizzlies of the National Basketball Association is the only team from one of the big four major sports leagues in Memphis. The city has minor league teams, however, the Memphis Redbirds of the Pacific Pacific Coast League is a Class AAA baseball farm team for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Mississippi River Kings is a professional hockey team of the Southern Professional Hockey League which plays its home games at Landers Center in South of N, Mississippi. The University of Memphis College basketball team, the Memphis Tigers, has a strong following in the city due to a history of competitive success. The Tigers have competed in three NCAA Final Fours, 1973, 1985, 2008, with the latter two appearances being vacated. The current coach of the Memphis Tigers is Tubby Smith. Memphis is home to Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium, the site of University of Memphis football, the Liberty Bowl and the Southern Heritage Classic. The annual Street Jude Classic, a regular part of the PGA Tour, is also held in the city. Each February the city hosts the region's Morgan Keegan Championships and the Cellular South Cup, which are men's ATP World Tour 500 Series and WTA events, respectively. Memphis has a significant history in pro wrestling. Jerry the King Lawler and Jimmy the Mouth of the South Heart are among the sport's most well-known figures who came out of the city. Sputnik Monroe, a wrestler of the 1950s, like Lawler, promoted racial integration in the city. Ric Flair also noted Memphis as his birthplace. In the 1970s and early 1980s, the former WFL franchise Memphis Southman, Memphis Grizzlies sued the NFL in an attempt to be accepted as an expansion franchise. In 1993, the Memphis Hound Dogs was a proposed NFL expansion that was passed over in favor of the Jacksonville Jaguars and Carolina Panthers. The Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium also served as the temporary home of the former Tennessee Oilers while the city of Nashville worked out stadium issues equals equals parks equals equals media related to parks in memphis tennessee at wikimedia commons major memphis parks include wc handy park tom lee park audubon park overton park including the old forest arboretum the lichterman nature center and nature learning center the memphis botanic garden and jesse h turner park shelby farms park located at the eastern edge of the city is one of the largest urban parks in the united states equals 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 other points of interest equals 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 Beale Street Blues fans can visit Beale Street, which used to be the center of the black community, where a young B.B. King used to play his guitar. He occasionally appeared there at the club bearing his name, which he partially owned. Street performers play live music, and bars and clubs feature live entertainment until dawn. Memphis Zoo The Memphis Zoo, which is located in Midtown Memphis, features many exhibits of mammals, birds, fish, and amphibians from all over the world. The zoo's giant panda exhibit is one of only five in North America. In 2014, USA Today 10 best contest voted the Memphis Zoo the four zoo in the nation. Peabody Hotel. The Peabody Hotel is well known for the Peabody ducks that live on the hotel rooftop, making the journey to the hotel lobby in a daily march of ducks ritual. Sun Studio. Sun Studio is a highly influential recording studio opened on January 3, 1950, by rock pioneer Sam Phillips at 706 Union Avenue. It is available for tour, which is where Elvis Presley first recorded My Happiness and That's When Your Heartaches Begin. Other famous musicians who got their start at Sun include Johnny Cash, Rufus Thomas, Charlie Rich, Howlin', Wolf, Roy Orbison, Carl Perkins and Jerry Lee Lewis. It now contains a museum as well as the still-functioning and operating studio, the Orpheum Theater. The Orpheum Theater was built in 1928 upon the former property of the Grand Opera House, which was burnt to the ground in 1923 during a striptease performance by Blossom Seeley. After Vaudeville's popularity waned, the building was purchased by the Malco Theater's theater chain in 1940 and presented first-run films until Malco sold the building in 1976. The Orpheum is now managed by the Memphis Development Foundation and presents 10 to 12 Broadway shows each year. The theater is also home to two of Memphis local arts groups, Ballet Memphis and Opera Memphis. The New Daisy Theatre The New Daisy Theater is an all-ages concert venue located on Beale Street. After 11 p.m., only those at least 18 years of age are allowed on Beale, unless they are going to, or from, a destination point like the New Daisy. The New Daisy routinely presents some of the biggest acts to come to the Mid-South. 
possibly the most popular venue in Memphis, past acts have included Anna DiFranco, AFI, Cannibal Corpse, Guar, Insane Clown Posse, Keller Williams, Lamb of God, Led Zeppelin, The Doors and Black Sabbath among many others. The venue also, on occasion, hosts the guerrilla production battle of the bands as well as mixed martial arts fights. Mud Island Amphitheater Located on Front Avenue, the Mud Island Amphitheater is a concert venue with an approximate capacity of 5,000 viewers. As one of the two major concert venues in Memphis, Past acts have included the likes of R.E.M., Fish, 311, The Black Crows, Fall Out Boy, Journey, New Kids on the Block, O.A.R., Pat Benatar, Smashing Pumpkins, Steely Dan, and Willie Nelson. The Pyramid, formerly a sports arena and concert venue, the Memphis Pyramid is now home to the largest Bass Pro Shops in the world. In addition to the retail store itself, the building contains an observation deck, restaurants, bowling alley, aquarium, and hotel. It is one of the first sights seen when entering the city from West Memphis via the Hernando de Soto Bridge. Its unique structure plays on the city's namesake in Egypt, known for its ancient pyramids. At 321 feet, 98 meters, it is the sixth largest pyramid in the world behind the Great Pyramid of Giza 456 feet, 139 meters, Khafre's Pyramid 446 feet, 136 meters, the Luxor Hotel 348 feet, 106 meters, the Red Pyramid 341 feet, 104 meters, and the Bent Pyramid 331 feet, 101 meters. Other, other Memphis attractions include the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium, FedEx Forum, and Mississippi Riverboat Day Cruises. Equals equals law and government equals equals. Beginning in 1963, Memphis adopted a mayor-council form of government, with 13 city council members, six elected at large from throughout the city and seven elected from geographic districts. Following passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, civil rights activists challenged the at-large's electoral system in court because it made it more difficult for the minority to elect candidates of their choice. At-large voting favored candidates who could command a majority across the city. In 1995, the city adopted a new plan. The 13 council positions are elected from nine geographic districts, seven are single-member districts and two elect three members each. Jim Strickland is the city's current mayor, elected on October 8, 2015. He is a former Memphis city councilman. The previous mayor of the city of Memphis was A.C. Warden. Since the late 20th century, regional discussions have recurred on the concept of consolidating unincorporated Shelby County and Memphis into a metropolitan government, as Nashville-Davidson County did in 1963. Consolidation was a referendum item on the 2010 ballots in both the city of Memphis and Shelby County, under the state law for dual voting on such measures. The referendum was controversial in both jurisdictions. Black leaders, including then Shelby County Commissioner Joe Ford and national civil rights leader Al Sharpton, opposed the consolidation. According to the plaintiff's expert, Marcus Pullman, these leaders tried to turn that referendum into a civil rights issue, suggesting that for blacks to vote for consolidation was to give up hard-won civil rights victory victories of the past. In October 2010 before the vote, eight Shelby County citizens had filed a lawsuit in federal court against the state and the Shelby County Elections Commission against the dual voting requirement. Plaintiffs argued that total votes for the referendum should have been counted together, rather than as separate elections. City voters narrowly supported the measure for consolidation with 50.8 in favor. County voters overwhelmingly voted against the measure with 85 against. The state argued that with the election decided, the lawsuit should be dismissed but the federal court disagreed. By late 2013, in pre-trial actions, both sides were trying to disqualify the other's experts, in discussions of whether regional voting revealed racial polarization, and whether voting on the referendum demonstrated racial block voting. The experts for both sides have clashed on whether racial block voting is inevitable in local elections and whether that would require some kind of court remedy. He noted, in the absence of distinct political interests that create polarized blocks of referendum voters defined by race, there is no cohesive racial minority voting interest that can be diluted by a referendum. In 2014, the federal district court dismissed the lawsuit, on the grounds that the referendum would have failed when both jurisdictions' votes were counted together. In total voting, 64 of voters opposed the consolidation. In the last week of December 2014, the U.S. 6th District Court of Appeals upheld that decision, ruling that, in this election, the referendum for consolidation did not pass and would not have passed even if there had been no dual majority vote required requirement, with the vote counts combined. Before the referendum, the decision was made by the city and county to exclude public school management and operations from the proposed consolidation. As noted below, in 2011,
2011 the Memphis City Council voted to dissolve its city school board and consolidate with the Shelby County school system. Without the collaboration or agreement of Shelby County, the city had authority for this action under Tennessee state laws that differentiate between city and county powers. Equals 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 crime equals equals equals. In the 21st century, Memphis has struggled to reduce crime. In 2001, it ranked as the second most dangerous city, and in 2002 as most dangerous by the Morgan Quitno rankings. In 2004, violent crime in Memphis reached a decade record low. However, that trend changed and in 2005, Memphis was ranked the fourth most dangerous city with a population of 500,000 or higher in the U.S. Crime increased again in the first half of 2006. By 2014, Memphis crime had substantially decreased, bringing the city's ranking up to 11th in violent crime. Nationally, cities follow similar trends, and crime numbers tend to be cyclical. Nationally, other moderate-sized cities were also suffering large rises in crime, although crime in the largest cities continued to decrease or increased much less. In the first half of 2006, robbery of businesses increased 52.5, robbery of individuals increased 28.5, and homicides increased 18 over the same period of 2005. The Memphis Police Department responded with the initiation of Operation Blue CRUSH, crime reduction using statistical history, which targets crime hotspots and repeat offenders. Memphis ended 2005 with 154 murders, and 2006 ended with 160. In 2007 there were 164 murders, 2008 had 138, and 2009 had 132. Violent crimes dropped from 12,000 939 in 2008 to 12,047. Robbery dropped from 4,788 in 2008 to 4,137 in 2009. Aggravated assault dropped 53,870 in 2008 to 47,158 in 2009. FBI's UCR. In 2006 and 2007, the Memphis metropolitan area ranked second most dangerous in the nation among cities with a population over 500,000. In 2006, the Memphis metropolitan Metropolitan area ranked number one in violent crimes for major cities around the U.S., according to the FBI's annual crime rankings, whereas it had ranked second in 2005. Since 2006, serious crime has dropped in Memphis. Between 2006 and 2008, the crime rate fell by 16, while the first half of 2009 saw a reduction in serious crime of more than 10 from the previous year. The Memphis Police Department's use of the FBI National Incident Based Reporting System, which is a more detailed method of reporting crimes than what is used in many other major cities, has been cited as a reason for Memphis' frequent appearance on lists of most dangerous U.S. cities. With regard to homicide statistics released by the city in more recent years, they show another dramatic rise in murders committed in Memphis. There were 140 homicides in the city in 2014 and 161 the following year. Then, in 2016, Police officials recorded 228 murders, a total that marked a 63 increase in homicides since 2014. According to Michael Rallings, the director of the Memphis Police Department, investigations determined that one third of the murder victims in 2016 had been involved in gang activity. Equals equals education equals equals. The city is served by Shelby County Schools. On March 8, 2011, residents voted to dissolve the charter for Memphis City Schools, effectively merging it with the Shelby County School District. After a with state law and court challenges, the merger took effect the start of the 2013-14 school year. In Shelby County, six incorporated cities voted to establish separate school systems in 2013. The Shelby County school system operates more than 200 elementary, middle, and high schools. Also included in this list is Memphis Harding Academy, a co-ed school affiliated with the Churches of Christ. Memphis also has campuses of several for-profit post-secondary institutions, including Concord Career College, ITT Tech Technical Institute, Remington College, Badrot College, and University of Phoenix. The University of Tennessee College of Dentistry was founded in 1878, making it the oldest dental college in the South, and the third oldest public college of dentistry in the United States. The Christian Brothers High School Band is the oldest high school band in America, founded in 1872. Equals equals media equals 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 television equals 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 major broadcast television affiliate stations in the Memphis area include, but are not not limited to equals 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 radio equals 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 terrestrial broadcast radio stations in the Memphis area include but are not limited to WQOX 88.5 FM Shelby County Schools grades K12 WYPL 89.3 FM other WEVL 89.9 FM variety WKNO 91.1 FM 
Public Radio, WUMR 91.7 FM, University of Memphis, Jazz, WHRK 97.1 FM, Hip Hop, WXMX 98.1 FM, Rock Radio, WMC 99.7 FM aka, FM 100, Top 40, American Contemporary, WHBQ 560 AM, Sports, equals 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 cultural references equals equals equals, Music, Memphis is the subject of numerous pop and country songs, including the Memphis Blue by W. C. Handy, Memphis, Tennessee by Chuck Berry, Night Train to Memphis by Roy Cuff, Going to Memphis by Paul Revere and the Raiders, Queen of Memphis by Confederate Railroad, Memphis Soul Stew by King Curtis, Maybe It Was Memphis by Pam Tillis, Graceland by Paul Simon, Memphis Train by Rufus Thomas, All the Way from Memphis by Mott the Hoople, Wrong Side of Memphis by Trisha Yearwood, Stuck Inside of Mobile with the Memphis Blues Again by Bob Dylan, Memphis Skyline by Rufus Wainwright, Sequestered in Memphis by The Hold Steady and Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohn, by The Disco Biscuits, New New Minglewood Blues and Candy Man by The Grateful Dead, You Should be glad by widespread panic roll with me by eight ball and mjg someday by steve erland popularly recorded by sean colvin and many others more than 1000 commercial recordings of over 800 distinct songs contain memphis in them the memphis rock n soul museum maintains an ever updated list of these on their website film and television many films are set in the american city including black snake moan the blind side Cast Away, Choices, The Movie, The Client, The Firm, Forty Shades of Blue, Great Balls of Fire, Hustle and Flow, Kill Switch, Making the Grade, Memphis Bell, Mississippi Grind, Mystery Train, and Secure, The Rainmaker, The Silence of the Lambs, Soul Men, and Walk the Line. The television series Greenleaf, Memphis Beat, and Quarry are set in the city. Literature. Many works of fiction and literature are set in Memphis. Equals equals infrastructure equals 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 transportation equals 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 highways. Interstate 40, Interstate 55, Interstate 22, Interstate 240, Interstate 269, are the main expressways in the Memphis area. Interstates 40 and 55 cross the Mississippi River at Memphis from the state of Arkansas. Interstate 69 is a future interstate that, upon completion, will connect Memphis to Canada and Mexico. Interstate 40 is a coast-to-coast freeway that connects Memphis to Nashville, Tennessee and on to North Carolina to the east, and Little Rock, Arkansas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and the greater Los Angeles. Angeles area to the west. Interstate 55 connects Memphis to St. Louis, Missouri and Chicago to the north, and Jackson, Mississippi and New Orleans, Louisiana to the south. Interstate 240 is the inner beltway which serves areas including downtown, midtown, south Memphis, Memphis International Airport, east Memphis, and north Memphis. Interstate 269 is the nearly completed, larger, outer interstate loop immediately serving the suburbs of Millington, Eads, Arlington, Collierville, and Hernando, Mississippi. It is expected to be completed in 2018. Interstate 22 connects Memphis with Birmingham, Alabama, via northern Mississippi, including Tupelo, and northwestern Alabama. While technically not entering the city of Memphis proper, I-22 ends at I-269 in Bihalia, Mississippi, connecting it to the rest of the Memphis interstate system. Interstate 69 will follow Interstate 55 and Interstate 240 through the city of Memphis. Once completed, I-69 will link Memphis with Port Huron, Michigan via Indianapolis, Indiana, and Brown Townsville, Texas via Shreveport, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. A new spur, Interstate 555, also serves the Memphis metro area connecting it to Jonesboro, Arkansas. Other important federal highways though Memphis include the east-west U.S. Route 70, U.S. Route 64, and U.S. Route 72, and the north-south U.S. Route 51 and U.S. Route 61. The former is the historic highway north to Chicago via Cairo, Illinois, while the latter roughly parallels the Mississippi River for most of its course and crosses the Mississippi Delta region to the south, with the Delta also legendary for blues music. Railroads. A large volume of railroad freight moves through Memphis, because of its two heavy-duty Mississippi River Railroad crossings, which carry several major east-west railroad freight lines, and also because of the major north-south railroad lines through Memphis which connect with such major cities as Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Louisville, New Orleans, Dallas, Houston, Mobile, and Birmingham. By the early 20th century, Memphis had two major passenger railroad stations. After passenger railroad service declined heavily through the middle of the 20th century, the Memphis Union Station was demolished in 1969. The Memphis Central Station was eventually renovated, and it still serves the city. The only intercity passenger railroad service to Memphis is the Daily City of New Orleans train, operated by Amtrak, which has one train northbound and one train southbound each day between Chicago and New Orleans. Airports. Memphis International Airport is the global superhub of FedEx Express.
Express, and has the second largest cargo operations by volume of any airport worldwide, surpassed only by Hong Kong International Airport. Memphis International ranks as the 41st busiest passenger airport in the U.S. and served as a hub for Northwest Airlines, later Delta Airlines, until September 3, 2013, and had 4,390,000 boarding passengers and planements in 2011, an 11.9 decrease over the previous year. Delta has reduced its flights at Memphis by approximately 65 since its 2008 merger with Northwest Airlines and operates an average of 30 daily flights as of December 2013, with only one seasonal international destination, Cancun. Delta Airlines announced the closing of its Memphis pilot and crew base in 2012. Other airlines providing passenger service are, Southwest Airlines, American Airlines, Seaport Airlines and United Airlines. There are also general aviation airports in the Memphis metropolitan area, including the Millington Regional Jetport, located at the former Naval Air Station in Millington, Tennessee. Riverport. Memphis has the second busiest cargo port on the Mississippi River, which is also the fourth busiest inland port in the United States. The International Port of Memphis covers both the Tennessee and Arkansas sides of the Mississippi River from River Mile 725, KM 1167, to Mile 740, KM 1191. A focal point of the Riverport is the Industrial Park on President's Island, just south of downtown Memphis. Bridges. Four railroad and highway bridges cross the Mississippi River at Memphis a bicycle pedestrian walkway opened along the Harahan Bridge in late 2016, utilizing the former westbound roadway. Equals 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 utilities equals equals equals. Memphis's primary utility provider is the Memphis Light, Gas and Water Division, MLGW. This is the largest three-service municipal utility in the United States, providing electricity, natural gas, and pure water service to all residents of Shelby County. Prior to that, Memphis was served by two primary electric companies, which were merged into the Memphis Power Company. The city of Memphis bought the private company in 1939 to form MLGW, which was an early customer of electricity from the Tennessee Valley Authority. MLGW still buys most of its power from TVA, and the company pumps its own fresh water from the Memphis Aquifer, using more than 180 water wells. Equals 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 healthcare equals equals equals. The Memphis and Shelby County region supports numerous hospitals, including the Methodist and Baptist Memorial Health Systems, two of the largest private hospitals in the country. Methodist Le Bonheur Healthcare, the largest healthcare provider in the Mid-South, operates seven hospitals and several rural clinics. Modern Healthcare Magazine ranked Methodist Healthcare in the top 100 integrated healthcare networks in the United States. Methodist Healthcare operates, among others, the Le Bonheur Children's Hospital, which offers primary level 1 pediatric trauma care, as well as a nationally recognized pediatric brain tumor program. Baptist Memorial Healthcare operates 15 hospitals, three in Memphis, including Baptist Memorial Hospital. According to Healthcare Market Guide's annual studies, Mid-Southerners have named Baptist Memorial their preferred hospital choice for quality. The St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, leading pediatric treatment and research facility focused on children's catastrophic diseases, resides in Memphis. The institution was conceived and built by the late entertainer Danny Thomas in 1962 as a tribute to St. Jude Thaddeus, patron saint of impossible, hopeless, and difficult causes. Memphis is also home to Regional One Healthcare, which is locally referred to as the MED. In recent years, the hospital has experienced severe funding difficulties that nearly led to a reduction or elimination of emergency room services. In July 2010, the MED received approximately $40.6 million in federal and local funding to keep the Elvis Presley Trauma Center operational. Memphis is home to Delta Medical Center of Memphis, which is the only employee-owned medical facility in North America equals equals notable people equals 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 twin towns sister cities equals equals Memphis has two sister cities as per sister cities international Canifing Gambia, Kaulak, Senegal, equals equals references and notes equals 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 further reading equals equals files, Roger, Memphis, in the Great Depression, U of Tennessee Press, 1986, Doughty, G. Wayne, 2010, Crusades for Freedom, Memphis and the Political Transformation of the American South, Jackson, Mississippi, USA, University Press of Mississippi, Haynes, Stephen R., 2012, The Last Segregated Hour, The Memphis Neelands and the Campaign for Southern Church Desegregation, New York, York, USA, Oxford University Press, McPherson, Larry E. and Wilson, Charles Reagan, 2002, Memphis, Rushing, Wanda, 2009, Memphis and the Paradox of Place, 
Globalization in the American South, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, USA, University of North Carolina Press, 2009, Rushing, Wanda, 2009, Memphis, Cotton Fields, Cargo Planes, and Biotechnology, in Southern Spaces, Online, August 28, C3, Access December 2, 2015, Rushing, Wanda, June 2017, No Place for a Feminist, Intersectionality and the Problem South, SWS Presidential Address, Gender and Society, Sage, 31, 3, 293-309, doi, 10.1177-089124321701083, Williams, Charles, 2013, African American Life and Culture in Orange Mound, Case Study of a Black Community in Memphis, Tennessee, 1890-1980, Lanham, Maryland, USA, Roman and Littlefield, Lexington Books, Weeks, Charles A., 2010, Paths, River and Other, From Nogales to San Fernando de los Barrancas Chapter 9, In Paths to a Middle Ground, The Diplomacy of Natchez, Bucfauca, Nogales, and San Fernando de los Barrancas, 1791-1795, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, USA, University of Alabama Press pp. 126-145, ISBN 9780817356487, retrieved December 2, 2015, equals equals see also equals equals, 1865 Memphis Earthquake, List of Mayors of Memphis, Tennessee, List of People from Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis Mafia, Memphis Summer Storm of 2003, equals equals external links equals equals, official website, Memphis Convention and Visitors Bureau, Memphis Memphis Chamber of Commerce, National Weather Service Memphis, TN, Memphis Daily Newspaper, The Commercial Appeal, Memphis, Back in the Day, Slideshow by Life Magazine, Bird's Eye View of the City of Memphis, Tennessee 1870, Library of Congress, Perspective Map of the City of Memphis, 10, 1887, Library of Congress.